This is the sixth video for the animal chiropractic class for the ethics and legal considerations portion. We've just wrapped up our discussion about the licensing regulations. And I wanted to summarize real briefly or remind real briefly that the chiropractors or the veterinarians have general licenses to treat animals. The chiropractors and other people providing animal chiropractic almost always should be providing that treatment only under the direction and supervision or delegation of a veterinarian so that it's being provided under that veterinarian's license. Uh, for this video, we're going to talk about informed consent. Now, chiropractors and veterinarians are both already familiar with informed consent, so I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Uh, the first thing about informed consent is I think some doctors approach it by providing too much information. They have a tendency to overwhelm the patient with information overload so that it's not possible for the patient to make a reasonable decision to exercise their freedom of choice. Uh, same thing, of course, would apply to a client. You can certainly overwhelm a client by providing too much information. I think George Bernard Shaw's quote is especially helpful as we talk about informed consent. He says, the single biggest problem with communication is the illusion it has taken place. Sometimes we think just because words have been exchanged that communication has occurred. Sometimes we think that just because someone has been handed a form, communication has occurred. Uh, and that's a mistake. You know, I know that those of us who use the internet click on that little box that says we agree to the terms of conditions all the time when we download new programs or go to new websites. But the reality is almost no one ever reads those terms and conditions. Informed consent can be approached the same way. It could be approached as this is just a form, but if that's the way it's approached, it's probably not going to be done effectively. I think it's important to look at informed consent as an educational process. Uh, the signed form or acknowledgement is certainly a key part of the documentation, and I don't want to undermine or, or understate the importance of that signed form. But I also think the informed consent process goes far beyond getting the client's signature. Now, we'll talk about how it improves the doctor-client rapport. Uh, and how it can protect the doctor from malpractice claims. So with that in mind, let's also think about why doctors fail to provide uh, informed consent. What's the downside that keeps them from doing it well and doing it well with every patient, every client? I think one reason is time. Doctors view this as a time-consuming process and they just don't want to devote the time to it. Uh, but I also think that spending a little bit of time during that first visit or two with the client helps the doctor establish that rapport that will uh, uh, cause the patient or, or help the patient trust the doctor. And that can be very important as the doctor is giving his advice. I think doctors also fail because sometimes they're afraid. Sometimes the, they're afraid the client may make bad decisions. Sometimes they're afraid that they don't have enough confidence or enough understanding about the benefits of animal chiropractic. I think it's also important to think about informed consent as, as being in the delivered in the appropriate context. Informed consent is not just about saying, here's all the things that can go wrong. Informed consent is about educating the client about animal chiropractic what are the alternatives to animal chiropractic, what they can expect from animal chiropractic, good and bad. Uh, and, and that, when the risk are placed in that context, the risk are very unlikely to cause a client to say they don't want to move forward with animal chiropractic. So just real quickly, why do we require informed consent? Uh, Bottom line is informed consent is required so that the client can effectively exercise their freedom of choice. The client can decide what care their animal receives, whether it's traditional veterinary care or animal chiropractic or no care, or certainly in bad cases, euthanasia. Uh, by the way, animal chiropractors should not be providing euthanasia. That, that's something that 
only veterinarians should be providing. But having the right to make that choice without having the information necessary to make an educated choice is really meaningless. So that's why we require informed consent is to give the client an effective or meaningful opportunity to choose the care for the animal. I think the other reason we require informed consent is this is the time to educate the client. Make sure the client understands what care that the animal will receive. Make sure the client understands what to expect as far as results, what to expect after the treatment is delivered. I also think getting informed consent is very critical to giving the doctor a chance to demonstrate their honesty. It gives them a chance to show that they're going to be honest about what they think they can deliver and that they respect the client's right to decide. That uh, doctor, pay, or doctor client rapport created through this informed consent will go a long way to protect the doctor from liability. Uh, because the client has participated in making the decision and has made the decision, they're more likely to accept some responsibility if there is a bad result or if something goes wrong. It's also true, or certainly there have been studies done with human malpractice cases, it's very true that if the patient, or in this case the client, likes and trusts the doctor, they're not inclined to see the doctor. The lawyers who handle malpractice cases will tell you that their clients never come in and say that they really like the doctor, they think the doctor was honest, but they want to sue him anyway. Even when there's a bad result, even if it was caused by carelessness, if the client likes the doctor, they won't pursue a malpractice lawsuit. <coughs> Uh, several states, including Texas, require a signed statement from the owner showing that they understand that animal chiropractic is an alternative therapy and that they are consenting to that animal chiropractic. This consent form is required to be a part of the record kept by the veterinarian. Uh, one thing that I think chiropractors can do as they're working with veterinarians is make sure they obtain some kind of consent signed by the, the client and then deliver that signed statement to the veterinarian for the veterinarian's records. The veterinarian should be doing it on their own, but just in case the veterinarian happens to miss one case or, or is not doing it on their own, the chiropractor can back them up by getting that documentation for them. This is uh, uh, an example uh, under the Texas rules of a veterinary referral and client consent form. It has a, a space for a signature by the client and by the veterinarian and includes representations by the client and the veterinarian. Uh, it could be divided into separate forms or it could be included in a as only a piece of a more general contract. But I think it's helpful to have some documentation like this in your file as an animal chiropractor to show that the client has given consent and to show that you're uh, acting properly with the referral from a veterinarian and the veterinarian's direct or general supervision of the animal's treatment. Uh, consent form should be signed by the client, should be dated. It needs to identify both the animal chiropractor and the veterinarian providing the care. Uh, like I mentioned before, it can be included in the contract with the client. Although uh, telephone consent can certainly be used for emergency situations, I recommend that it be used only in emergency situations and that if when it is used that it be followed up with a written confirmation. If nothing else, the veterinarian or the animal chiropractor should send a written communication to the owner confirming that they gave the consent and giving the owner an opportunity to sign and return that letter to acknowledge its receipt. I think it can also be helpful to have the telephone consent uh, witnessed by a second person 
which is pretty easy to do simply by putting the client on a speakerphone so that a second person like a, a technician can uh, confirm that the client gave the consent uh, or perhaps both the veterinarian and the chiropractor can confirm that they gave the consent. So I've covered this very quickly because I know almost all of you are already familiar with informed consent. The key part of informed consent to me is to be sure uh, the communication is delivered effectively. Uh, be sure you take the time during these first few visits to establish that rapport with the client. Uh, remember that first impressions are lasting impressions. If the first impression is that you spend the time with the client to answer their questions and to provide good care for the animal, uh, in the future when you're treating the animal and you don't have as much time available, the client will not be or is less likely to be upset uh, that you don't have as much time as, as they would like to spend with you. So there's some benefits to providing that informed consent. Uh, in the next uh, video, we're going to talk briefly about what to do when things go wrong, how you should respond to errors and communicate in that situation.